on the track, make it slap. DC, Good, huh? what's going on? So uh, humbled and stoked to be here with you guys. Shout out to uh, my man, one of my best friends who is from here. If you're really into uh, fashion and art, um, you probably know his stuff. You know, he's done amazing collaborations with Puma and, uh, I mean, you wanna, you wanna give him a little whatever thing about what you've been doing? Yeah, I mean, my Instagram's at natural, N-A-T-U-R-E-L. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making you hit play. Uh, natural also raps and he was, uh, me and him used to make a lot of music together like 10 years ago. We, we used to just do so much music, but he's he's gotten his feet into the fashion world so heavy. It's, it's, it's so amazing. So um, yeah, we'll definitely hit play on that. With production, what I've learned is you really want to be specific and intentional with what exactly you want to accomplish, who you want to accomplish that with. For some people it's, I want to be like a top producer with working with like every major artist in the industry. For other people it's I want to create like creative music and like kind of go on festivals and be like a producer DJ. For other people it's uh, I just want to do experimental lo-fi shit on Spotify and do that. So I think it's our job as producers to try a bunch of things but then eventually what you're gonna to have to do is ask yourself what do I want to commit to and what excites me the most? I always told myself I want to be the bit, like the biggest producer in the world creating uh, music that inspires people. And I knew that I wanted to do that with other artists. You might want to just really hone in on one idea and then like set your, your sights on that. I would say for the most part, the most of the music I've made up until this point, what I was originally kind of trying to play was something, I've done a lot of like sample based, essentially just like trap music, but I think I had like kind of my own little style to it. Well, the thing that I personally have learned about time management is you make time for stuff, you know, and ultimately it's a choice unless you're a minor, which most times it isn't your choice because you have to go to school, you have to do this, you have to do that. But when you're an adult, you do have a choice. We're so programmed to think that we are required to ask for permission to do certain things. Like we have to ask permission to quit a job and like pursue a passion or ask permission from like a parent or a guardian or a significant other to like take a random flight to LA to like meet some people because I feel like doing it, you know? And so you do it in an adult responsible way, but I think when you look at life in a way where you're creating time and prioritizing things that you want to prioritize, then that's where the life-changing stuff starts to happen. I think a good thing you want to think about is instead of releasing full albums, I think you want to just release singles. So if you have 15 songs on one album, uh, you could release a single every week and then create four pieces of content on Instagram to lead up to that Friday release. And if you're replying to every comment, I guarantee you you'll go from 500 to 800 to 1,000 in, in three months, as opposed to you dropping a 15 song album and then after one day, it's already old and no one cares. Right. Yeah, and Russ did that for two years and he's a millionaire, right. right? And so if I was a rapper, I would absolutely do the Russ model. Monday could be you in the studio creating the song behind the scenes with a DSL camera. Tuesday could be uh, you talking to the screen on an iPhone, explaining the lyrics and the concept of the song. Wednesday could be the artwork with one minute audio snippet of like the song. And then Thursday could be, you know, another piece of content and then Friday will be the actual song. So uh, if you do that, it's a slower burn, but it's, it's really the only way to, to build up an authentic base, you know? Um, Cause there's just too much music out there, you know? So you wanna reel people in with your story. Are you on TuneCore or Distro Kid or United Masters or any of that? Uh, I was about to get on TuneCore. Like, the app is cool. Like analytics, right? Yeah. They're taking TuneCore and, and DistroKid a step further, where if uh, it's a it's an app, so if a fan follows you, you can feed that fan 
all of your content directly with, with push notifications, right? Yeah. If you drop a song, boom. If you drop a t-shirt, boom. Yeah. This show kid's great, but United Masters has took the, that model and improved upon it, and it's still kind of new. Give it a little trial. Like if you're if you're with DistroKid, don't get rid of it. Put like a song out on United Masters and create a profile, and then like fuck with it for a couple months. And if you 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 like the way it feels, then you might want to you know migrate. You guys know about the Instagram algorithm, the 10% algorithm. Raise your hand if you know about it. Most of you don't. Fuck you guys. You don't know shit. When you post up on Instagram, it'll take the 10% of your uh, closest followers, meaning the people that engage with you the most and the people that you engage with the most. So it's your closest friends. And it'll show that piece of content to only those people, which is anywhere between five and 10% of all of your followers. Based on how much engagement you get with your closest friends, look at that and say, oh wow, this post is getting a lot of engagement. Um, uh, we'll take this post and we'll show it to everyone else. You don't get that much engagement from your post initially in the first 10 minutes, then Instagram will look at it and say, this post sucks, it's not worth showing the other 90%. That's why when you guys post up, sometimes you'll, you'll get a lot of traffic on certain posts and then other posts are like so small. Cool little hack into that is to immediately reply to every comment that you receive on the video or the picture. Bump up that engagement in that first 10 minutes. So those first few minutes of when you post are like the most crucial. <laughs> there we go. Past the Ox in DC it was amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of young talent that came out. Just building community, being able to embrace uh, you know, each other and each other's crafts and talk shop and stuff like that is like no other than past the ox, you know what I'm saying? Dre King, producer from Washington, D.C. It was crazy. I mean, all ages, it was people there from 17 up until their 40s. There's information for everybody. Too many jewels to even name, man. So if you can do it, if he's coming to a city near you, it is worth the investment. on the track, make it slap. My own philosophy with samples is like, <coughs> if you put some shit on the samples on it, and, and it doesn't get the numbers, then it's, it's under the radar, meaning that so the original publishing owner won't, won't, won't try to get you. But if the shit goes, they're gonna come, they're gonna take a percentage, but then you have to get record. You know what I mean? So either way, you're gonna take a little L, but the win, the ultimate win, is having to get record.